While on the set of Transformers 4 in Hong Kong, a small group of gangsters attempted to extort money from director Michael Bay. When he refused to pay, one member tried to hit him in the head with an air conditioner. The media were quick to say that this was the work of the Hong Kong triads, but these were merely street-level thugs. The real triads are a series of independent crime syndicates that have become some of the most powerful and feared criminal empires in the modern world. Conflicting sources and a lack of historical documentation have meant that the triad's true origin are a widely debated subject, but most agree that they began with the Qing Dynasty's Tian Di Hui, the Heaven and Earth Society. There are two accounts of where they came from, one mythological and one pieced together from what information is available. Today, let's look at the origins of the triads. The mythical origins of the Tian Di Hui come from a fictional tale called the Xi Lu Legend. The story begins during the Kangxi period of the Qing Dynasty, when the country was being invaded by Xi Lu barbarians. A group of 128 Shaolin monks came to the aid of the emperor. The small number of monks easily defeated the barbarian army with their kung fu skills. The emperor wished to reward the monks for their victory, but they refused and returned to their temple. A rumor was spread by an evil official that the monks themselves were planning a rebellion, and as such, the Qing Dynasty emperor ordered that the monks be killed and their monastery be burned to the ground. From the destruction, only 18 monks managed to escape, and while fleeing, many more died until only six remained. When the monks finally reached the ocean, they discovered a white incense burner in the sea, and on it were the words, Restore the Ming and Cut Off the Qing. The monks saw this as a sign from heaven, and began recruiting others to join their revenge mission. They managed to recruit 108 members, and together they formed the Heaven and Earth Society, or the Ten Di Hui. The group immediately decided to begin their attack, but were quickly defeated by the Qing army. The surviving members, now without a leader, went their separate ways, waiting for the time when they could rise again. This anticlimactic version of the Xi Lu legend is the oldest of at least seven versions, with each version becoming more and more fantastical as the years go on. One version has the fleeing monks being rescued by Buddha, who built them a bridge to cross mountains. A large inspiration for the Xi Lu legend comes from the classic Chinese novels, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and Thieves of the Marsh. It might seem a little strange how this story led to the creation of some of the world's most powerful criminal organizations, but when you study the true history of the Tian Di Hui, it becomes much clearer. So yeah, let's do that then. The real Tian Di Hui are believed to have originated from the Fujian province in around 1761. The Fujian province at the time was becoming a powerful economic zone thanks to its mineral deposits and rich agriculture. Land prices were inflating to the point where locals were unable to sustain themselves, thus being forced to migrate out to other provinces in order to look for work or trade. Faced with extreme financial insecurity, the migrant workers began forming mutual aid groups in order to help each other cover the burdens of living so far away from home. At the same time, many of these groups began turning to crime and piracy as a way to make some fast money. Historians believe a traveling martial artist and exorcist named Ti Xi returned to his home in Fujian in 1761. He and a few others created a sworn brotherhood called the Tian Di Hui as a way to overthrow the corrupt officials who were controlling Fujian. They devised hand signals, secret codes, as well as a complex initiation ceremony to legitimize the group. Six years later, the men made enough money from robberies, extortion and gambling houses to fund their rebellion. They then decided to launch their attack but were quickly defeated by the Qing army. The group became mostly disbanded, but the one thing that remained was their traditions and ability to recruit new members. Many took the Tian Di Hui organization model, symbols, and rituals and began creating their own groups, kind of like the McDonald's franchise of gangs. So even though each group was completely independent, they all shared the same identity. Many members joined for protection, but others joined to gain money and power. While the Tian Di Hui group famously assisted Hong Xiu Tran in the Holy Taiping Rebellion, were the main force of the Liu Shuangwen Rebellion in Taiwan, and the grandfather of modern China, Sun Yat-sen, is also said to have joined the ranks in order to generate monetary support to overthrow the Qing government. But for the most part, the sentiment of overthrowing the government, which was the main feature of the origin myth, was almost never the motivation for the smaller franchises. To avoid prosecution from the government, the Tian Di Hui groups have taken on a number of different names, such as the Hongmen, Double Knife Society, and the San He Hui, but the term triads was first coined in 1821 by Dr. William Milne, referring to their superstitious use of the number three and its prominence in their organization. 
Over the course of the next 200 years, individual groups following the rituals and traditions of the Tian Di Hui grew within the criminal underworld, to the point where they started controlling all aspects of illegal activity. Their expansion and rise to becoming an international criminal superpower is something we'll look at in the next episode. So, thank you for watching another one of my videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and definitely subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I'm Wukong, and goodbye.